The guest of honor for today's evening, Dr. Vinod Paul. He is a globally recognized medical scientist and a public health expert. His journey is versatile. और इनके लिए सिर्फ इतना ही कहना चाहूंगी क्योंकि डॉक्टर साहब वेट कर रहे हैं सीढ़ियां उन्हीं के लिए हैं जिन्हें कुछ ऊंचाई तक जाना है जिनकी मंजिल है आसमान तक उन्हें अपना रास्ता खुद बनाना है तो डॉक्टर पॉल ने अपना रास्ता खुद बनाया है ऑल इंडिया इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिकल साइंसेज में से लेकर नीति आयोग तक प्लानिंग के लिए सभी के स्वास्थ्य को सुरक्षित रखने के लिए डॉक्टर पॉल प्लीज गिव एम अग हैंड थैंक यू वेरी मच नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग ऑनरेबल लेफ्टिनेंट गवर्नर ऑफ डेली श्री विनय कुमार सक्सेना जी डॉक्टर राजीव बहल सेक्रेटरी डी एच आर एंड डी जी आई सी एम आर डॉक्टर शिव सरीन जी प्रेजिडेंट नैम्स डॉक्टर दिगंबर बहरा जी प्रेजिडेंट इलेक्ट एन एम एस पास्ट प्रेजिडेंट्स फेलोज डिस्टिंग कलीग्स presidents future leaders and colleagues i am honored to be here on a day of celebration of this this great institution great academy an academy which has a unique legacy a profound legacy more than that of any other academy in medical sciences that i know of uh, this academy sir is different because it encompasses all the disciplines of medical sciences that's the 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 profoundness of this uh, this uh, group uh, this association and that also imposes then not only to to be to to feel glorified in that but also to perform and perform all across the health sector of india in all the specialties and all aspects of healthcare and healthcare system i am very honored and very pleased that we have seen a huge transformation under the leadership of dr shiv sarin the initiatives that he listed are amazing there must have been occasions in the journey in the history of this institution when nams moved from one state to another but this journey of 22 to 24 that you steered sir is a, is was actually much needed because i think there were issues where the the, the energy levels and uh, the, the amount of work that we could do we were not doing so truly there is has been an infection point and it's difficult to say which area you have not covered in the 10 points that you listed so big hand to dr sareen and the leadership thank you for doing this for india sir thank you the associations or academies in our sphere have four functions and they all emanate from promoting excellence in the sphere that we are dedicated to but the four functions comprise promoting science and art of education teaching capacity development so this is the first bucket and we heard a great deal having been initiated and built upon the second is to celebrate new knowledge new knowledge research innovation and so on we should think about how we can be catalyst even more in that regard the third is policy and advocacy or advocacy for policy and for change and i think stellar work has been done through task forces and we are very proud the fourth opportunity that we all have is direct reach to the people to the stakeholders in terms of uh in terms of health per se in a broad sense uh, and one example of that could be indeed the the transitioning into a you know uh into the non communicable disease uh, onslaught that we have how can this be stemmed and there the voice of nams directly to people could perhaps be forceful and there could be other ways of assisting so i think there's a scope for reaching out directly to people for issues that matter and you collectively we all have done let's say during covid but say for mental health non communicable diseases better lifestyle blending in, you know traditional medicine to but reaching out to people is one area that dr digambar jain you may like to focus on so these are the four functions but you can see a huge portfolio of activities uh, initiatives 
uh, have been crafted by the National Academy. Sir, I take this opportunity to briefly uh, bring about three points for kind consideration of the Academy. First, NAMS has taken an initiative in teaching in, a, in multiple ways, the emeritus professor system and then the reaching out to postgraduate system. My request is, additionally, please consider to do this in a formalized manner to support the DNB programs. And DNB programs are so important for our nation's journey to create workforce, a specialty workforce, that we all should put our weight and our time behind if possible. The reason is very simple. Postgraduate seats have, uh, have been more than doubled from about 32,000 seats. We are above 70,000 seats. And this momentum is being made, maintained because there has been a severe deficit for speciality workforce. If the overall workforce is one per thousand WHO norm, and as a developed nation we are pitching to move to three per thousand, we already were at about one, and with Ayush workforce we are 1.4. But when you look at the gradient for special specialities, for most specialities, the gradient is where we need three to four, we have one specialist. That gradient difference is much more acute, and business as usual for several specialities even to reach the not the developed nations, but one level below that would take 25 years, 23 years, 79 years for some specialities. Someday we can talk more about it. We need to bridge this because this nation expects speciality care. Now, in the NMC-driven medical college system, huge improvements have taken place. Infrastructure has been built. This takes time. You build up medical college. Then a few seats are created, some more specialities are created, and so on. That journey will go on, but at the same time, we have 7 lakh beds in the private sector. And all are teaching beds, potentially. The other 7 lakh are being used for the work anyway, to have, you know, 72,000 minus 12,000, uh, you know, seats. But from these 7 lakh, we only have 12 to 13,000 seats. Each bed, sir, potentially, is a teaching bed. What you need is one person eight years PG after MD and another person five year MD. And you can start teaching them formally and lead them up to degree and two seats are given. This is a potential that exists in Delhi Hospital, sir. Uh, and with, under your guidance, this is one area which I have earlier also discussed with you, sir. But then I am now reaching out to all of you to please Support DNB programs. Don't say poor quality, this, that, second rank. No. Make it the best way of doing it. PG training is apprenticeship. This is how it happens in UK, for example, which we often draw example of. So I urge that formally make it a part of DNB system so that the postgraduate DNB students across a territory and more, and there could be many cells doing this, are embraced into this. They all come, they study, and it's more about practical training. It's not about theoretical training. That's possible because it's hands-on that makes a difference and wonderful teachers can contribute. So the first suggestion is mainstream it with the DNB system. We can work for an MOU with the National Academy. In any case, that originated here, the NBE system. So that's my first suggestion. Sir, the second wave of task forces that you may consider, advocacy for policy, would be one on quality of care. Time has come for India that we need to move to world-class standards of hospital, clinical care, of course, also primary care for that matter. There is a huge gap between where we want to be and where we are today. In our journey toward 2047, as a developed nation, quality, quantity is fine, we are, we are progressing with this, but then quality is now the need of the hour. The Honorable Prime Minister has emphasized this aspect repeatedly, that time for quality as we move forward and we need it. So how can we improve systematically quality of our hospitals, district hospitals, the medical colleges, AMSs for that matter, private hospitals, what is the accountability framework? Static standards, NABH. How many government hospitals are NABH accredited? You can't even count them in one finger. Sir. So there has that it must happen. Optimum human resources, optimum systems, accountability, outcomes. 
so quality of care in in its entirety the vision could come from this exalted body number 2 please contribute towards the control and amelioration of antimicrobial resistance it's a cause that we all should be a part of it cannot be done only by research agencies it cannot be done by creating vaccines alone for that matter or medicines we have to change we have to bring about a change in our 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 way of practicing apart from everything else which means we create a culture of being responsible users of antibiotics that's about the profession and then there are systematic things that need to be done by way of promoting antimicrobial stewardship so that the antibiotics are used and released on the basis of an objective criteria and not on the basis of my whims or fancies whether it is private sector or the government sector so i think bringing together the profession for amr which is a silent pandemic which might chip off a huge part of our gdp as we move forward we are told that by 2050 the this would be the commonest cause of mortality exceeding cancer mortality and ncd mortality so let's and the country is seeing very little progress on the scale for this purpose and fortunately we are developing national action plan 2.0 into which we can weave in the role of professional bodies and above all the national academy of medical sciences my third suggestion for the task force is to create hospital managers for district hospitals hospitals cannot be done and run sorry cannot be run by common sense by clinicians no the time has come that our hospitals are run professionally and that's about supporting the hospital management systems uh, formal training other ways of training using it using other system best managerial principles we could have an in between transition where we bring it out for people who are not necessarily trained as hospital manager with the objective that eventually every hospital every district hospital medical college is run by professional managers it's about professional management the time has come that we move in that direction sir you have fourth suggestion you have built a blueprint for transplant uh, upgrade in transplant uh, dr sirin can be implemented now we need about 2 lakh transplants and we do about 15000 huge gap we do 1000 liver transplants where it should be something like 50000 potentially but the issue is we can make changes in the milieu in terms of policy and very important steps have been taken i would not take time but the steps significant steps have been taken in the last one year and we'll do more pledging has become much more profuse now but where is the capacity why in the city sir very few hospitals do kidney transplant i don't want to name the hospitals what is the hesitation is it training is it opportunity is it the injection of some resources so let's create a vision that we have 60 let's say modestly 60 new renal and liver transplant centers renal slash liver let's say in the country within the next 3 to 4 years and what will it take let's work in that direction specifically put the minds together and we'll be there to support for resources to make a case for resources and we will reach out to our leaders like the honorable lieutenant governor to see how at the state level the ut level action can be taken and my last suggestion for task force is reimagining medical education further down we want next generation thinking about next generation reforms nmc has been a reform a period from mci to bog to nmc has moved the, the clock moved the needle to some extent but then we have a you know a real need for now thinking more about it i can only give a few examples one fal- faculty shortages are not going to be met very soon we talked about specialists being so you know the gap that we talked about and so you need a specialist then become a teacher is another journey how can we help this process you have emeritus professor 25000 of us can we contribute in a certain way on the ground in a systematic way then pedagogy needs to now become a blended pedagogy with students choosing to read materials on the net we have to simply accept it so that's the way students are now learning we are slow in understanding how our role should change in a certain way to make the best of it now how do we crack i have no idea at the moment 
Let's talk, talk about it. Because it cannot just go on. We think we are teaching in the, in, in the classrooms, but students are not coming to classrooms in most medical colleges. And they are learning on their own. How can this be blended? So I think next gen med medical education, pedagogy and beyond, assessment, competence, concerns about their clinical skills, can we start talking about and then use the NMC platform for the reform? My last suggestion is not for task force, but for partnership and engagement. My request to NAMS and Dr. Digambarji, for particularly for yourself, is that let's work also systematically with our nursing colleagues. Our nursing standards, nursing quality, nursing super specialization needs help from all of us, from policy enablers to the, to the people and to co-professionals like us. I urge you that in this journey for excellence, for health sciences, healthcare and health system, it will be in most, it will be most apt to work together with nursing, uh, nursing associations, in particular, maybe through an MOU that train Nurses Association of India and others that we need to partner with them for ensuring that as we move toward a more ideal healthcare system, our nursing does not lag behind. They would be very much benefited by the support that medical professionals can. In any case, they are not different. They are part of our team always, but I don't see them here. So I would urge that we work, take them along, and that will give them a boost of energy, ideas, and working together for the better care of the people of India. I applaud uh, the work that has been done. Uh, NAMS has a future, a great potential. It has a great legacy. And let's look at suggestions that come from young people. But I have given some submission for a few of action points. Thank you for the opportunity. Jai Hind.